What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I've been able to do anything in the garage since it's been a million degrees in Arizona. But things have changed since I actually installed a mini split AC unit in my garage. This is a Senville 18,000 BTU uh, mini split. So you have an indoor unit and then you have lines that run through the wall and then there's actually an outdoor unit. I haven't really got a chance to utilize it yet since the first day. Um, so hopefully I can put that thing to use and get some work done on the cars. Had a lot of parts uh, stashed away, so I'm gonna try to tackle some stuff on that in this episode. First thing I think I'm gonna tackle is I have some track spec hood vents for the C5. Uh, really cool setup. So there's two that go on the sides and then there's a big uh, vent that goes in the middle. And the idea behind that is a couple things. So these wheel wells being vented um, actually produce a little bit of downforce and prevent lip because as your tires are rotating, um, air actually gets pushed up and it, it creates lift at higher speeds. So Venting these wheel wells uh, will help me, um, you know, keep the front end down, which is kind of nice and stabilize things. And then number two, you're getting rid of that brake heat that's built up in the wheel well area as well. Then the big vent in the center uh, will hopefully move the air through the bottom feed, through the radiator, and then out through the hood, all that hot air. So. Hopefully, combined with my new track spec radiator here, this is a thick boy, this is almost the thickness of my hand. <laughs> so hopefully that combination will solve some of the cooling system issues. I haven't really been able to run this car, unfortunately, because it does overheat with that stock super thin radiator from the factory. Now the, the one interesting part of this is gonna be trying to cut this fiberglass hood. Corvettes are mainly made out of fiberglass front to back. And, you know, there's a couple different ways you can cut these. Um, I, I know a lot of people use cutoff wheels, but uh, I was looking into the, the boating industry and what they use to cut the hulls in their boats and to do repairs. And I found out that it's actually better to use one of these uh, oscillating multi-tools so what this does is vibrate extremely fast in only like a three degree um, oscillation and that actually cuts. But you, since you don't have a spinning uh, disc like a conventional cutoff wheel, it keeps that fiberglass dust down, which is extremely important. You don't want to be breathing that crap in. So, and actually these, these uh, have more accurate cuts. Um, I'm going to be buying a blade, but it's it's basically like a half circle looking blade and that makes, you know, for really straight cuts. You can cut along the line more evenly, your lines that you have drawn out. So I'm going to try that route. Um, I do actually have to cut um, where the chassis mount wing comes out. There's uh, some uprights that have to come through this this bumper section. So I'm gonna have to make some really precise cuts here as well. So I'm hoping that multi-tool will do the job for this as well. Um, a lot of fiberglass work guys say that's that's the way to go. So we'll try it out. The first thing I'm gonna tackle with this hood situation is track spec actually provided some instructions on how to tape off the hood and align everything perfectly for the three vents and they actually provided some um, templates to, to tape those on and then you can figure out where the cuts need to be made and if you like the positioning of it. They do a lot of uh, work with um, aerodynamic modeling and they have a really good idea of where to lay um, these vents out from the factory and they do give you instructions on how to do that. So. I'm not gonna mess with the science. I'm gonna listen to you know their recommendations and, and make the cuts where they decide. So after a bunch of time laying this thing out, um, 
I think I got everything correct with all the maths and stuff. Um, they did a pretty good job of telling you where to measure from. So it's like six and a, six and a half inches from the headlight cutouts. And then, you know, you have to draw your center line here. Um, doesn't look exactly centered. From the blue tape, I just roughly laid that out and then, um, you know, took the whole measurement of the hood across, divided by two, and then connected all the lines to draw a straight line. I don't know what the deal was with this center line part. There should have been a center line drawn. So I had to, on the template, figure out where the center was. I think I have that correct. Uh, it looks pretty good by eye, even if it's a tiny bit off. I think I can maneuver um, once the vent's in there a tiny bit um, from where I cut it out, but looks pretty good so far. Um, it's gonna look really cool from inside the car too, because uh, those vents, those lures stick out pretty far, so should be able to get some cool like race car vibes from looking at from inside. Remy was a huge help. He uh, he helped me uh, measure it and held the measuring tape for me, so that's a good boy. All right, so I got the hood off. Um, that's all taped off, ready to cut. Um, and then I did end up removing the rear bumper because the chassis mount wing is actually going to bolt onto this bumper beam here. So. It was not a fun job getting this bumper off. Um, a lot of the uh, screws that hold it on are on the inside. So you have to reach your hand through where the taillights are and unscrew and unbolt all those. And there's a bunch of plastic clips on the bottom that were all like old and didn't want to come off. So at least I got it off now. The next thing I need to do is remove this thermal barrier here so I can actually cut properly. Um, after that, I'm going to be drilling some pilot holes to guide my cuts and then I should be able to get to cutting. So now I'm going to be drilling some of my pilot holes here. Okay, I really don't like how that blade is cutting the fiberglass. It just suddenly grabs and like, it wants to tear. It doesn't actually want to cut a clean hole. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and start with the tool itself cutting. So overall, I think this multi-tool worked out pretty well for cutting fiberglass. I did start off with using a drywall slash wood blade. Uh, it did chew up that blade very, very quickly. Um, I was thinking that fiberglass being somewhat a soft material, um, it would work well for that. So um, what I ended up doing was switching to a bimetal blade for cutting, um, you know, screws out of wood or nails out of wood. And I think cutting metal itself. Uh, so it made quicker work of, of that. I did really like that half moon style uh, blade it allowed me to get into those, you know, 90 degree corners by starting with the flat edge first and then working my way out. Um, I was able to, to make those perfect cuts. Also, uh, I think it's, it's a lot better for making straight cuts and versus like a Dremel or, or cutoff wheel, you know, it, it keeps that dust down because you don't have an actual spinning blade. It's just oscillating back and forth. So I'll probably use this in the future. Like if I if I ever have to cut fenders or something, I might try this out versus the cutoff wheel. Seems a lot cleaner and, and a little bit safer to use. The other cool thing about these is this was actually a tool developed for cutting off casts uh, in the medical industry because you can cut off a cast and not have to worry about cutting skin of a patient. So I thought it was kind of neat uh, that it was first developed in the medical industry. So once I went through and did my first cuts, I ended up having to flip over in some areas and cut through that second layer of hood. Um, so you can see that in some of the parts of these this video, because there is like a backbone structure to this.
So the cuts are finished. Um, I just put, just as a mock-up, the vents in their slots to make sure everything fit right. Um, for some reason, there's these two little veins that stick out in the back here. So I gotta cut little slots for those underneath. Um, but other than that, it looks pretty good. It looks like wild from this angle. Like you could see right through. And once the tops of these wheel wells are cut out, you're gonna literally see the top of the tire <laughs> through that fender. All right, so now that all these are sitting flat and flush, I did trim a little bit on that top edge there, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and start drilling out the rivets or the holes for the rivets and then start riveting in. Um, I should probably go in like a crisscross pattern just so it settles evenly. After three days of work um, and countless new tools to learn, uh, this is the final product. I think it turned out absolutely amazing. And I can't wait to put it on the car. I gotta wait till my girlfriend gets home. I need to carefully set this back on, but um, I'm actually gonna have to leave the hood off for a little bit because um, I'm gonna be doing some other maintenance and taking the radiator out, so I'm not gonna be installing that just yet. But my new wing is coming this Friday, so I'll probably do, be doing an install video on that next. Um, this thing is gonna be looking pretty sweet.